Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another one of these one take videos. Today we're going to be doing rabbits or over across the pond. I think they call them rebates, but we're going to be doing uh, rabbits for the grooves that we cut yesterday. Remember I showed you how to cut grooves with uh, just hand tools, a chisel and uh, marking gauges and stuff like that. Well, today we're going to do the rabbits to fit into these. And I'm going to show you uh, three or four different ways to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use what's called a moving filister plane. Oh boy, I got to get my thing set up here. Let me find that little scrap piece of wood. There it is. So we'll use a uh, moving filister plane and these are really cool planes. And the reason they're called a moving filister plane and the difference between a filister plane and a rabbit plane is filister planes are meant to cut cross grain. They usually have a knicker on them, which you can see right here. Stanley also made a moving filister plane, the 78. It has a knicker too. You can see you can take it out and rotate it. And this little knicker will go ahead of the cutting blade there and score a line so that you don't get tear out in cross grain. So these old wood ones <clears throat> are really cool. They're usually pretty easy to find. Sometimes they They'll take a little bit of a tuning up to get to be usable, but I have the fence on the bottom. And the reason this is called a moving filister is because the fence moves. Now there's regular, just standard stationary filisters, but a moving filister, which is the most common, will have a moving fence. So I have this set just proud of a quarter inch and I have the depth stop here set just proud of a quarter of an inch because my groove is a quarter of an inch perfect. So I want my, tongue essentially this rabbit is going to be a little bit narrower than a quarter inch so it fits in there and we don't have any problems. Now to use these moving filisters you start by pulling back a little bit. I think I actually need to set this knicker down just a tip a touch because yesterday I was using it going with the grain and when you're using it going with the grain you don't need the knicker. So there we go we have the knicker proud. And what I'm going to do first, and you always start, if you're doing all four edges, you always want to do the end grain first because you're typically going to get blowout on the far side. And if you have the blowout on the far side on your end grain, when you come back and do the long grain, it'll clean up any of that tear out or blowout. You can also help reduce that, and I'll show you real quick. What I'll do first is draw backwards, and my knicker will score a really nice line. And then I'll start moving forward. But first, before I start using the plane, I can actually take a chisel, see where that little mark is. And if I just drive in there, that'll help prevent any really nasty blowout at the end there. So. looks like my knicker is just a little bit too deep. All right. Maybe you can see there the knicker and it's just proud. All right. So another tip is you usually want to start the cut instead of starting all the way back like you do in a lot of uh, regular planes, you actually start forward and slowly start working your way back to deeper cuts. It just works better that way. It's really important to make sure you hold these things nice and vertical. And a lot of times, <clears throat> these uh, most of these moving filister planes, a lot of them will have a skewed blade. And what that skewed blade does is it pulls the plane into the shoulder, <clears throat> which helps you keep a nice straight cut. Now 
You can hear I'm not cutting anymore. My fence is preventing me from going any deeper. Let's do a quick check on that side. And usually, got to take a couple extra. It's really hard to get that last couple passes. It's kind of finicky. You just have to kind of move your plane. Just, you know, if you're not dead on square, it won't get that last little bit. So, yeah, see, there's. There we go. Seems like I always check it. It's too wide, and then come back and. <laughs> and we'll have it that time. There we go, nice fit. All right, now, the other side, if you don't have a moving filister plane, you can just use, kind of the same way you would cut a dado, you can just use a chisel and a saw and a router plane if you have a router plane. So what I'll do is in this case, I'll use my marking gauge, I'm gonna mark a line, which will be the edge of it, and also the depth. Let me get them just a little bit proud of a quarter inch on these. Now you want to get real nice and deep because you're going to use your chisel to make yourself a nice little knife wall here. I'm going to go along and come in here. <laughs> and so take your marking gauge and sever those Brussels fibers out of there. Now what I can do is take a saw and this is tricky this definitely takes a little bit of practice and on a shorter piece like this it's doable the longer your board gets that you're having to try to use a saw in that track mark the harder it becomes so i'm going to drop this saw into that knife wall there and slowly start dropping the heel of the saw Now I can just use <clears throat> a chisel in a couple different ways to break out all this waste. Take a wide chisel, come in this way. This grain is really weak this direction. And you can also go, like if this was a rabbit, or I mean a dado, you can, you can go this way because you would do the same process if it was basically a captured dado. Dados are grooves that run across grain. You take your chisel and just run it that way. You bust out all that material. Be careful at the end. Now with rabbits and stuff like this, in this Instant. This is for a drawer. This this is going to be in totally enclosed and not seen. So you have to kind of remember what you're working on and how critical you need to be and how clean you need to be with your your cuts and stuff. Stuff like this. This isn't ever going to be seen. You just want it to serve a purpose. And it's not crucial that it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. So I'm looking at my line. And you can pretty much do this with a chisel. But I'm going to go ahead and finish it off with a router, routing, router plane. And I already set this to the depth. But these things are just so fun. I use them any chance I can.
There we go. Let's get that little corner out of there. And I'm working a little bit faster than I normally would because I'm trying to get this video done. Usually I take my time a little more, but check this one. <clears throat> Good fit. All right, the next method is using a rebate plane or shoulder plane. So I'm going to move this thing to vertical. Again, I'm going to use my marking gauge here. <clears throat> Give myself a nice line all the way down. Same thing, a depth line. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already, I would really appreciate um, if you subscribed and leave me a comment. Let me know if you like this type of video. If uh, you have any ideas for projects you'd like to see me do in these little one take videos that I'm going to do over the next few weeks, let me know down in those comments and turn on that bell icon if you haven't already so you get notifications when I put these out. All right. So same thing. I'm going to basically create a knife wall all the way down. And it's always harder going with the grain to get this to get a good knife wall. It's a lot easier when you're going cross grain. So I'm going to really drive this marking gauge, give myself a nice deep line here. And now I'm going to come through. And I get asked a lot what are some of the favorite tools that I use and recommend, and I have a list of those on my website. So feel free to head over there and check that out. I also have plans available and merchandise and things like that. It's a great way to help support me. If you go and purchase anything on Amazon, if you use one of those links first, even though you don't, you don't even have to buy whatever I have on my website there, but if you use one of those links, it, I just get a little bit of a kickback and it really helps. So... Um, I appreciate all the love and support you guys always give me. Helps keep me going. So thank you so much for everything, everyone. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'm really getting this one a little bit deeper because this next, this next part's tricky. So I'm giving myself a nice little deep knife wall here. Now, again, you could try to use a saw, but once it starts getting this long, it kind of gets a little bit harder. And if you remember yesterday or the video I posted on how to make grooves, you really could just take a chisel and you could chop down and do it that same way. But this is when you get the longer the pieces you get into, the more difficult it becomes. So I'm just trying. All right, now I'm going to back up and show you some different. Some people, I mean, you can call these shoulder planes, but technically shoulder planes are usually made out of metal. They're meant for cutting end grain on the shoulders of your tenons, and they usually have a low, low angle. These technically are rabbit planes, and you usually see these a lot. This is one I made a long time ago. The Stanley Philister plane, you can use it as a rabbit plane. What you need here is you need a plane that's blade extends to the cheek of the plane. And then also this Stanley 10 or 10 and a half. These are really nice. The blades extend all the way because you need that blade to get into the corner. See if I can do it with my original rabbit shoulder plane here. So what I'm going to do, I have that knife wall now and I got it nice and cleaned out. I want to make sure it's really clean because I really need to, these first couple passes are really slow and important. 
What are we doing on time? 20 minutes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to drop the plane at an angle so that the corner of the plane is going to ride in that groove. And you have to go real nice and slow at first. Take a shaving. Take another shaving and I'm going to slowly start rotating the plane back to vertical. And I can see my depth as soon as I meet up with my end grain cuts, I know I'll be done. Almost there. All right. That looks pretty good. Let's check it. Go this way. Nice fit. Okay, and then the last one is just using the filister plane, the moving filister plane. If you have one, you would use it for, for all four edges, but if I have tear out there, so this one, you don't, it's the, the simplest, quickest for any kind of rabbits like this. So I don't need my knicker, so I'm going to save its cutting edge, and also the knicker will sometimes get into a groove if the grain's running off. The grain's running off the board this way, that knicker might get into that groove and pull the plane away, so I'm just going to get that out of the way. Beautiful. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for stopping by watching that one take video of making rabbits with a couple different methods. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Thanks so much again for all the support, everyone. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Stay safe.